the Cabo for Christ channel, where we shed the light of Jesus Christ of Nazareth into a world that gets darker and darker by the minute. Today, I got a beautiful piece of work message for you guys. Uh, it takes place in the book of Daniel. This is when um, the king of Babylon saw Jesus Christ. What? Yes, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon saw Jesus Christ. There's a part in Daniel where King Nebuchadnezzar actually praises the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the King of Heaven and Earth, Jesus Christ. He bows down to the God of the Hebrews. He does. Um, so for this quick piece of work, this is during the time when uh, the, tr the three uh, brothers, the Hebrew brothers, uh, they got slave names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they were tossed into the uh, oven. So tossed into the fire, and uh, we see what happens there, that there was a fourth that was walking with them in the flames, that none of them got burned. Okay, so we're going to be looking at chapter 3 in Daniel. We're going to be reading verses... Uh, 14 through 25, but before we get to the scripture, there's two verses, 17 and 18, where the word um, that is used is Elah, and uh, it's Strong's Concordance number 426, and it means our God or thy gods, your gods. Again, the word is Elah. I'll have it put up, the spelling of it and everything. And it can mean thy gods or our God. So your gods, plural, because these pagans, they worshiped many gods. They worshiped the creation. Or it can mean our God, the Hebrew God. Now, the interesting thing is, is that this is not translated from Hebrew, this verse. This is actually an older word. Elah from the Chaldean, which was the language of Babylon, one of the languages that they spoke. Okay, so I just want you guys to understand the significance of that, that even in the Chaldean pagan language, there is reverence to the Hebrew God, Yahweh. Okay, reverence and reference. All right, so let's get right into it. Daniel 3, 14 through 25 states, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? He's asking them, Are you not worshiping and serving my gods or me? Because he was in that image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up, he was a man god and he demanded worship from the people. So he's asking them, are y'all not complying with this? And no, they're not. Absolutely not. No compromise in our walks, guys. Now, if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, Ye shall be cast at the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God, most high, that shall deliver you out of my hands? So he's asking them, look, whenever you hear any kind of music, you know, because even the Muslims today, they love playing their music when everybody needs to pray five times a day, right, for their mosques. He's telling them, when you guys hear that music, you better bow down and start worshiping. If you don't, we're going to throw you into the oven. So, okay, go ahead. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Verse 17, if it be so, our God, this is Elah, okay, our God, Yahweh, 426, uh, strong concordance, whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So they're saying no matter what, we're not going to betray our God. We're not going to provoke him to jealousy and anger. No, even at the risk of 
death, imminent death, being thrown into a fiery furnace, we are not going to compromise. We are not going to worship you and your demonic fallen gods because our God is big enough to deliver us from this furnace. And if it's his will, he will. If it's not, he won't. You have to have that degree of faith in your walks, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, there's things that I'm seeing in ministry and just in life, and I'm sure you guys are too, that is shaking, can shake a person of lesser faith's faith. It can make them make a compromise, but you can't do this because you have to know the power in the one that you walk in. Okay, and that is Jesus Christ. All right, uh, verse 18, verse 19, I'm sorry, apologies. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should hate, heat the furnace one seven times more than it wont to be heated. So look, as soon as he didn't get what he wanted, and do this with people, as soon, if their intentions aren't pure with you, as soon as they don't get what they want from you, they show who they really are. And you see how angry Nebuchadnezzar got. As soon as they were confronted with eminent death, it wasn't bad enough that he changed their names to Babylonian names, which were slave names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these were not their names. These were slave names given to them. That wasn't enough to change their names. They wanted them to bow down to their false deities, and if they wouldn't, under penalty of death. And even under penalty of death, they did not compromise. So, once Nebuchadnezzar heard no, he got angry. That's what people will do if their motives aren't pure. All right, verse 21, then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flames of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, they died. He commanded the oven to be so hot that those who set it the fire, set it on, lit, lit the fire, and were bringing these three guys to be burnt in it, they died from the sheer heat that was coming off of this furnace. Can you believe that? Okay. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. Oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the, fire, in the, into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. See, they only threw three in there, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But now Nebuchadnezzar is seeing a fourth person in there. Who do you think that is? He's going to actually name who it is. Verse 25 again. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, in the book of Daniel, wicked old King Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian king, saw the Son of God. Go look, look at it for yourself. The way that it is written. Saw Jesus Christ in the midst of the furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So what that means, brothers and sisters, is that through any fiery trial you go through in life, through your faith walk, Jesus Christ is with you. He is in that furnace with you. And no matter what the enemy tries to throw at you, if you stay true and faithful to him and continue to worship in spirit and truth, nothing will hurt you, nothing will harm you, as because the Son of God is walking with you. You have angels that are with you everywhere you go. You need to be strong in your faith. Okay? That is the end of this message. 
This was a quick piece of work. Love you guys. Reach out if you need something, and we will see you on the next one. Ciao.